Reverend Father, give the blessing. Blessed the kingdom of the Father, of the Son, of the Holy Spirit, now and ever and forever. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. <coughs> For peace from high, for the salvation of our souls, let us pray to the Lord. Peace in the whole world, for the stability of the Holy Church of God, and for the union of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord mercy. For this holy church and for all who entered with faith, reverence, and fear of God, let us pray to the Lord. Lord mercy. For our holy Father Francis Pope of Rome, let us pray to the Lord. For our most reverend Metropolitan William, for our God loving Bishop Milan, for the venerable Presbyter at the Diaconate in Christ and all clergy and people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord mercy. For our government and for all in the service of our country, let us pray to the Lord. Lord mercy. For this city, for every city, community, for the people living in them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord For favorable weather, for abundance of the fruits of the earth, and for peaceful times, let us pray to the Lord. Lord mercy. For those who travel by sea, air, and land, for the sick, the suffering, the captive, and for their salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. That you be delivered from all affliction, wrath, and need, let us pray to the Lord. Protect us, save us, have mercy on us, and preserve us, O God, by your grace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, you, most holy, most pure, most blessed, and glorious, the Edith, the Theotokos, and ever Virgin Mary, with all the saints, let us commit ourselves and one another, and our whole life to Christ our God. Lord of God, mighty beyond description, glorious above understanding, merciful without limits, a loving as will be an expression, look with compassion on us and this holy church master, and show us and those who pray with us riches your tender mercy. For to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, is your glory, honor, worship, now and ever, and uh, forever.
attentive. Come, let us worship and bow before Christ, O Son of God, risen from the dead. Save us to sing to you. Alleluia. For you are holy of God, and we give glory to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and ever, and forever.
Veras bija ten tev. Pīs bija tolo. Es dom bija ten tev. In all that you have done, your justice is apparent. Blessed are you and praiseworthy, O Lord, our God and our fathers, and glorious forever is your name. Wisdom. A reading from the book of Hebrews. Let us be attentive. Brethren, by faith Moses, when he had grown up, refused to be known as the son of Pharaoh's daughter. He wished to be ill-treated along with God's people rather than enjoy the fleeting rewards of sin. Moses considered the reproach borne by God's anointed greater riches than the treasures of Egypt, for he was looking to the reward. What more shall I recount? I have no time to tell of Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, of David and Samuel, and the prophets, who by faith conquered kingdoms, did what was just, obtained the promises. They broke the jaws of lions, put out raging fires, escaped the devouring sword. Though weak, they were made powerful, became strong in battle, and turned back foreign invaders. Women received back their dead through resurrection. Others were tortured and would not receive deliverance in order to obtain a better resurrection. Still others endured mockery, scourging, even chains and imprisonment. They were stoned, sawed in two, put to death at sword's point. They went about garbed in the skins of sheep or goats, needy, afflicted, tormented. The world was not worthy of them. They wandered about in deserts and on mountains. They dwelt in caves and in holes of the earth. Yet despite the fact that all of these were approved because of their faith, they did not obtain what had been promised. God had made a better plan, a plan which included us. Without us, they were not to be made perfect. Therefore, since we, for our part, are surrounded by this cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every encumbrance of sin which clings to us and persevere in running the race which lies ahead. Let us keep our eyes fixed on Jesus, who inspires and perfects our faith. Peace be to you, reader. Wisdom be attentive.
Among his priests were Aaron and Moses. Among those who invoked his name was Samuel. They invoked the Lord, and he answered. Reverend Father, bless the proclaimer of the gospel of the Holy Apostle and Evangelist John. May God, through the prayers of the Holy, glorious, last Apostle Evangelist John, grant that you proclaim the word of his great power for the fulfillment of the gospel of his beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Wisdom, let us stand and listen to the Holy Gospel. Peace be to all. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Saint John. Oh, let us be attentive. At that time, Jesus wanted to set out for Galilee, but first he came up on Philip. Follow me, Jesus said to him. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the same town as Andrew and Peter. Philip sought out Nathanael and told him, We have found the one Moses spoke of in the law, the prophets too, Jesus, son of Joseph from Nazareth. Nathanael's response to that was, Can anything good come from Nazareth? And Philip replied, Come see for yourself. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him, he remarked, This man is a true Israelite. There is no guile in him. How do you know me? Nathanael asked Jesus. Before Philip called you, Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree. Rabbi, said Nathanael, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus responded, Do you believe just because I told you I saw you under the fig tree? You will see much greater things than that. Jesus went on to tell them, I solemnly assure you, you shall see the sky opened and the angels of God ascending and descending. On the Son of Man. Glory to Jesus Christ. Today, we, together with the church, we celebrate a huge victory. We are victorious because we won against the iconoclasts who wanted to get rid of every holy image, icons, vessels, and even theology. That is why we today call the Sunday of Sunday of Orthodoxy. 
this Sunday where we celebrate the right way of life and the veneration of icons. We commemorate the historical moment where icons were returned into the churches and the faith was home. So what happened? In short, before the icons could be returned back into the churches, the church itself had to go through self-cleansing and a period called iconoclasm. Iconoclasm is a political and religious movement which destroys all of the religious icons, sacred images, vessels, structural designs of the churches, and the question of reality of the incarnation of the only begotten Son of God. Imagine someone you knew very well, and that person would raid your house or church and burn and destroy all the holy things you have within that place. And then, after the distraction, he would tell you, I've saved you from all the idols you were worshipping. It was a horrible movement done by faithless and arrogant people who knew better than anyone else and would not listen to the true teaching of, of the true faith. During this movement, we gained strugglers, martyrs, and saints who defended the true faith. Imagine if we lost the war against iconoclasts. Look around. We wouldn't have none of this. No icons, no sacred vessels, no building, no theology. And I would not be able to talk about the imprint that God has left within us because it would be adultery. The saints defended our faith through sacrifices and hard toils. But what is most important, they defended the meaning of Christ's incarnation. And they gave it a definite meaning and understanding. And because they did that, I can talk about the image that was imprinted on us. Because the incarnation of Christ gave the meaning of the image and likeness to us. Because of the incarnation, we get to experience faith with all of our senses, what is required of us to become Christ-like and find that treasure, the image of him that is within us. This makes me ask, are we iconoclasts too? Maybe we don't burn and destroy the holy images publicly. But aren't we destroying the more, in, the more and most important image that is within us? Do we cultivate our time and energy to remove all the trash and dirt from our heart, from the most important thing that was given in our life, which is the image? Or do we let ourselves to be consumed with worldly desires and pleasures? And do we let ourselves forget about God? See, we cannot serve two masters because we will love one and despise the other. And in our fallen state, we have to always fight every day, every moment, every minute, every second against the one master who doesn't want us to come back to Christ. The return towards Christ is painful because if you want to return and renew the commandment with, with him, with Christ, we must deny the Satan and his works, detach ourselves from the world, and start to live a life of repentance. I was attending a book study which was done by Father David Abernathy, and in this book study, we read about a young man who lived a sinful life, who got to his senses, and ran to cemetery to live in the tomb until he, his very last breath. At first, 
This story seems to be as any other story. Bad turns to God and remains with God until the last breath. But in this very short story of this young man, you can find many steps. And each of these steps are mentioned, that are mentioned, are needed to be climbed in order to live a life in Christ. And I will not go through all the steps, but I will share with you one point where it left me with awe. And that moment was when the young man said, I prefer to die than to sin again and fall away from Christ. What a profound saying. He chose death before sin. I'd rather die to sin. I'd rather die than to sin and fall away from Christ and lose his image and likeness. But that is not all. He followed up by forcing himself to stay in that tomb until his last breath. Because he knew that once he comes out, the demons will come. And his whole habits will come. And his old ways of lifestyle will come like flood. And he would not be able to stop them. And it would be even harder to start again. This young man became watchful of all of his doing, all of his thoughts, all of his actions, because he knew that if he goes astray from the commandments, he loses everything that gives him salvation. If we want to detach ourselves from the world and live a life of repentance, which is life in Christ, we must learn the law of God the language of God, which is prayer, and keep the commandments of Christ that gave us in the gospel. There is no other way to paradise. God is not going to let us in paradise if he doesn't know us, if he doesn't recognize his own image that he is instilled within us. In the keeping of the commandments and keeping the strict prayer life, we can help uncover the hidden treasure which is within us, which is the image of God within us. And once we start, God will allow us, God will know us, and he will always be helping hand as long as we struggle to keep his likeness. Glory to Jesus Christ. Let us all say with our whole soul and with our whole mind, let us say, O Lord Almighty God of our fathers, we pray you hear and have mercy. <coughs> have mercy on us, O God, according to your great mercy, we pray you hear and have mercy. Again, we pray for our Holy Father, Francis, Pope of Rome, and from us, Reverend Metropolitan William, for our God, loving Bishop Milan, for those who serve and have served in this Holy Church, for our spiritual fathers, and for our brothers and sisters in Christ. Again, we pray for our government and for all in the service of our country. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Again, we pray for the people here present who await your great and abundant mercy, for those who show us mercy, and for all Christians of the true faith. For 
you, O merciful, loving God, and we give glory to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and ever and forever. kingdom, all you Christians of the true faith, always, now and ever and forever. May the Lord God remember his kingdom, our Holy Father, Francis Poporom, our most reverend, Metropolitan William, our God, loving Bishop Milan, the interpriest, the Economic Monastic Order, our government and all in the service of our country, and the ever memorable founders and benefactors of this Holy Church. May the Lord God remember all you Christians of the true faith, always, now and ever, and forever. Precious gifts placed before us, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Look upon us, O God, and behold, this hour of worship accept this, that you accepted the gifts of Abel, the sacrifices of Noah, the first fruits of Abraham, the priesthood of Moses and Aaron, and the peace offerings of Samuel. Just as you accepted this true worship from the hands of your apostles, now, O Lord, in your goodness, accept these gifts from the hands of us sinners. May we who have been made worthy to minister without blame at your holy altar obtain the reward of faithful and wise stewards on the fearsome day of your just retribution. Grant this remorse is your only begotten Son with me, Abolas, together with your all holy, good, and life creating spirit, now and ever and forever. Amen. Peace be to all. Love one another, then with one mind we may profess.
Tu dors, tu dors, et mes domores viet en ti. Let us stand right, let us stand in awe, let us be attentive to offer the holy and offer our in peace. In the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and love God and Father and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Let us lift up our hearts. Oh, let us give thanks to the Lord. Singing, shouting, crying aloud, and sing the triumphal hymn of
Ascending into heaven, he has taken his seat at the right hand of your majesty on high, and will come to reward everyone according to his works. But he left us these memorials for his saving passion, which we have prepared according to his command, for when he was about to go forth to his voluntary, ever memorable and life creating death. On the night when he surrendered himself for the life of the world, he took bread into his holy and all pure hands, and presenting it to you, God and Father, he gave thanks, blessed, sanctified, broke. And gave it to his holy disciples and apostles, saying, Take it, this is my body, which is broken for you, for the remission of sins. And gave it to his holy disciples and apostles, saying, Drink of this, all of you, this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the remission of sins. from your own, always and everywhere. In special, we ask most holy, most pure, most blessed and glorious Lady, the Theotokos and ever Virgin Mary.
Amen. the first, O Lord, remember, Holy Father, Francis Popper, our most reverend Metropolitan William, our God, loving Bishop Milan, preserve them for the Holy Church in peace, safety, honor, health for many years, as they faithfully impart the word of your truth. And grant that with one voice and one heart we may glorify and praise your most honored magnificent name, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and ever, and uh, forever. Amen. May the mercies of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ be with all of you. Now that we have commemorated all the saints again and again in peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the precious gifts, offering, consecrated that our God who loves us all may receive on this holy, heavenly, mystical altar as a Roma of spiritual fragrance and send down upon us in return his divine grace and the gift of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Asking for unity in faith and for the communion of the Holy Spirit, let us commit ourselves and one another and our whole life to Christ our God. And make us worthy, O Master, that we may be confidence and without condemnation. There I call you, Father, God of heaven, and say. the kingdom and power and the glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and ever and forever. Amen. Peace be to all. Bow your heads to the Lord. Through the prayer, through the grace, the mercy, loving kindness, your only begotten Son with me, are blessed together with your all holy good and life creating spirit, now and ever and forever. Let us be attentive. Holy gifts to holy people. Jesus Christ,
Ďakujem, prouč. Approach with fear of God and with faith. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. The Lord is God and has revealed
Save your people, O God, and bless your inheritance. We have seen the true light. We have received the Holy Spirit. We have found the true faith, and we worship the undivided. Blessed is our God, always, now and ever, and forever.
Arise. Now that we have received the divine, holy, most pure, immortal, heavenly, life-creating, and awesome mysteries of Christ, let us worthily thank the Lord. For you are our sanctification, we give glory to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and ever and forever. Amen. Let us go forth in peace. In the name of the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, blessing those who bless you and sanctifying those who trust in you, save your people and bless your inheritance. Preserve the fallenness of your church, sanctify those who love the beauty of your house, glorify them, return by your divine power, and do not forsake us who hope in you. Grant peace to your world, to your church, to the priests, our government, and to all your people. For all generous given ever perfect gift is for bow, coming down from the Father of lights. And we give glory, thanks, and worship to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and ever and forever. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Almighty God of our fathers, who are glorified and worshipped in the Trinity, whom neither reason can comprehend, nor word describe, whom no man has seen in any place, whom we know only from Holy Scripture, in which we believe and from which we know you to be God, the Father eternal, and the only begotten Son and the Holy Spirit. You appeared in a vision to your patriarch Abraham and manifested he, her, yourself in the Holy Spirit. In the Old Testament, in the form of three angels, you revealed yourself in the incarnation of the only begotten Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who was born of the Blessed Virgin Mary at the baptism of John in the Jordan in the most radiant transfiguration Tabor and the most rare glorious ascension on the Mount of Olives, thereby showing to us the image of the, of the All Holy Trinity, you who also taught us to reveal the image of our Lord Jesus Christ, not made with hands miraculously reproduced by him upon a handkerchief, and sent to Abgar the prince of Edessa, which handkerchief healed him and many others, who suffered from various maladies, and who likewise did not reject the images likeness of your holy saints, but received them. We humbly beseech you. Look upon these icons and other religious items. Bless and sanctify them and endow them with the power of healing of, and of dispelling every diabolic snare so that all who pray with sincerity before them may be heard and gain, gain the mercies of your loving kindness and may be recipients of your grace. For you are our sanctification, we give glory to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and ever and forever. Amen. These icons and our other religious items are blessed by the spring of this holy water. In the name of the Father.
of the Son, of the Holy Spirit. The blessing of the Lord be upon you through His grace, loving kindness, always, now and ever, and uh, forever. Amen. Glory to you, O Christ God, our hope. Glory to you. Praise our true God, risen from the dead, mercy on us and save us. Through the praise of his most pure mother, of the holy, glorious, illustrious apostles, of our holy father, Basil the Great, of our holy father, Nicholas the Patron of this church, and through the praise of all the saints. For Christ is good and loves us all. Glory to Jesus Christ. Glory to Thank you, beautiful.